Many people will tell you from experience that anger can be a very hurtful and destructive force. But our guest today believes that you can make your anger work for you, not against you. Graham Bretherick is a registered psychologist who will share with us the purpose and value of anger. Stay with us. This is Lifeline Today. Welcome to the program today. We're so glad you've tuned in with us. Uh, Joan, I should mention that right away we want to mention the phone lines. Yeah. Our uh, prayer center has been actually quite busy and taking a heavy load of calls. Yeah. Uh, we encourage you to start calling right now if you want to connect with our prayer mm -hmm. partners, and that would be a great idea. The numbers are on your screen. <laughs> and we're just delighted to have Graham Bretherick on the program today. Welcome. Welcome, Graham. Good to be back again. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're a returning guest, aren't you? And that's good. And by the way, if people want to watch our two-hour special that we did when we launched this program uh, and, and segments with you that we did uh, much, well, just a little while ago, they can go to our website, dickandjoan.com, yeah. okay. and it, our, we go through our story, but then our two-hour special goes through our story as well, doesn't it, Joan? Mm -hmm. And uh, Graham is a big part of that. But today we want to talk about your book, and we did say something about anger at the opening, but the book right. is called Healing Life's Hurts. Mm -hmm. So let's go with that first. Let's <laughs> like, uh, well, let's just talk about the correlation between the two. Right. right. Well, because most people assume that anger has to do with you know, all kinds of stuff out there, when most of it has to do with when I get hurt, God actually gave me anger as a energy, really, a defense mechanism or an energy to yeah. deal with the hurt. Mm. A lot of times people store it in them side, inside themselves, and so, of course, it becomes counterproductive and destructive inside. So, yeah. so what I'm hearing you're saying is when you have an initial response of anger, that's normal. Right. Hurt if, is normal, yeah. But if you don't deal with it, then it becomes destructive. It's like an infection. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. you cut your hand or something like that, and you don't deal with the infection, it can get worse and worse, mm -hmm. you know, so you deal with it. See, so hurt produces danger, and danger is what anger is designed by God to help us deal with the danger. Mm -hmm. Right. So just talk to us mm. about some of the, the common everyday things that, you know, could hurt us, that immediately be, uh, you know, turn to anger. Right. And if we don't deal with them, what happens? Well, somebody criticizes us, for example, you know, and so we put out an idea and they say, ah, I don't believe that. And so we don't want them to know that we feel hurt by that, mm -hmm. so, but we respond with, ah, it's okay, but we're hurt. Mm -hmm. So we store that and now we're angry at that person because they have, you know, hurt us. So if we don't deal with that, then we withdraw from them or we'll say something later on mm -hmm. against them or we'll gossip about them or we'll internalize it. Mm. And that process can be called depression. Yeah. Or it can affect your immune system. Wow. So a lot of the psychosomatic <laughs> illnesses out there uh, are the result of anger turned inward. Really? Yes. And I think, too, a lot that aren't psychosomatic, but they have a root in, in anger because anger does um, kills your immune system. It kills you your immune system. Well, it, it, it limits your, limits immune, system. your immune system. So even cancer, for example, which is a cell mm -hmm. division disease, mm -hmm. um, but if your immune system isn't up strong enough because everybody has cancer cells in their body. Yes, they do. So if you don't have enough uh, energy in your immune system to fight that, then you can succumb to the, uh, the cancer mm. cells in your body. Mm. So let's talk about the person listening to this right now and saying, you know, uh, probably internally they're analyzing, now am I internalizing anger? Am I experiencing this? Or how would they know? How, what would you say to someone? How do you know there's some destructive force of anger going on? Well, I mean, just if, for example, if we use the illustration of somebody hurt me, and then when somebody hurt me, I then withdraw from them emotionally. I can feel it inside myself. I know I'm withdrawing from them. Mm. Mm. Or I'm thinking of ways to get back at them. So then I start an argument, and I criticize them back again. See, that indicates that I was hurt, and so the, the anger's there. Now, again, the anger's not bad. Anger is actually given to us by God for us to protect ourselves because somebody without enough anger gets victimized all the time. Hmm. Yeah. So we well, need anger. So it's, so it's protective as well, then. Right. And some people have been taught to totally suppress it because it's wrong. Don't right. be angry. Yeah. And, or that, it, that if you think that way, that you're not spiritual or something like that. And so the fact is God gave 
anger to David to defeat Goliath when Saul had too much fear and he was Israel's giant, should have been able to defeat Goliath or take him on in, in the power of God. But David said, how dare you insult the armies of the living God? So he actually used so anger. Something rose up something in him. Something rose up in like him. called righteous anger, yeah. right? Now, we, we don't like to talk about Jesus having anger, but Jesus has anger, but it's always, it is righteous. Yeah. We yeah. call it righteous indignation because we yeah. can't use the word anger. Well, I'm reading through the Gospels right now and Gospel of Mark. And, yes. and then, you know, when these people criticized him for healing on the Sabbath, he says he asked the question and then got angry yes. because they were all mute. They wouldn't answer him, right? Yeah. And he says, is it better to heal on the Sabbath or not? Is right. it good to do good? on?" The... And he was angry. And so there was that <laughs> yeah. natural emotion in Jesus. I know you'll pick that. I pick that up quite often in the Gospels in yeah. various passages. Yeah. Actually, I don't even find anger as emotion because it's, it has a lot of emotional expression. Mm. Right. It's one of the unique things, in, to my mind, like fear and shame and guilt, those things all have emotional expressions, yeah. but I think anger is actually energy. And so, and I take that from my study of the word scripture. You know, in scripture, there's over 600 references to the word anger, anger, wrath, rage. It's a major theme in scripture. You know, now that you just said that, <laughs> all of a sudden I thought of an instance that happened to me uh, in 19, I think it was 1991. Uh, I was, uh, at that time, I was running a pirate unlicensed transmission of <laughs> television you and I was, yeah, I, was, yeah, I was breaking the law but I was I, I was told the government I didn't want to break the law there was just no way to get a Christian television license but yeah. you know this so it was this thing and I remember when we did this no it was in 1987 I guess these uh, individuals from the departments of communication uh, came and spoke to me in my office and they started wagging their finger at me and saying, how can you, a pastor, a, a, man, a leader of a congregation, how can you advocate, you know, breaking the law? And seriously, I, I should have been intimidated and suddenly something just like a switch went on inside of me yeah. and I, I responded with, and you're right, it wasn't emotion. It was like a righteous uh, cause, you know. Right. How dare you right. say that mm -hmm. anyone can get a television license, but if you're a Christian, you can't. How dare you say that, you know? Yeah. And that was really quite confrontational. And the individual said right away, wow, I never knew you felt that way. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> and then they began to help me. I yeah. said, so, well, you know, we could probably help you with your transmission <laughs> and all this. So that's an, a good example of turning it's anger a good into yes. a friend. Yes, right? it is. Yeah. Well, in anything, you have a, take a husband and wife situation, you have yeah. a conflict, <clears throat> and how do we deal yeah. with that conflict? Mm -hmm. if, if, say, the husband is more dominant or the wife is more dominant, whichever, and then the other one is passive, resistant, and just mm -hmm. be, is quiet. So that anger turns into depression or low self-esteem first. Low self-esteem. And then mm -hmm. eventually can turn into depression. Right. Wow. So you've got to work that stuff out. Buried anger or repressed anger. Repress, repression is basically buried anger. It's, it's um, uh, subconscious. I yeah. think there's it's people watching this program. They're saying, well, okay, I'm the enabler. I'm the passive one. How do they deal with a person that's overtly angry all the time? Well, again, part of it is you have to learn how to forgive them, but then you probably need to get help in your relationship. Yeah. So, I mean, because I know that in my relationship with my wife, with Sherry, if I'm, I'm the more dominant of the two of us, she, she repressed a lot of it for a long time until we, we realized this was not healthy for her. Yeah. She need, I, plus, I need her. I need her right. speaking into my life. Yeah. But if you've got a lot of conflict in a marriage, a lot of times you need a third party in because mm -hmm. you don't have the capacity within yourself when you got this yes. conflict. Well, going if you're on. constantly putting her down, putting her down, putting her down, so she becomes, you know, develops a real low self esteem, she, she is not going to speak into your life anymore because she doesn't want to face right. the repercussions of right. doing that again. And then she starts believing lies about herself. Yeah. Uh, and that, that whole thing becomes another difficult path. So, was that a surprise to you then when you said, now you're referring to a long time ago when that happened to you, right? to some degree in a different circumstance. Was that a surprise? Did a third party bring you to an awareness of that? Well, you know, we've had a, a pastor, I mean, a personal pastor or a spiritual mm -hmm. father okay. for 30 years, I mm -hmm. mean, yeah. in our lives. And so he was a great help to us in our process of okay. working, it from, working it through. And that's before I knew some of the things I knew about anger. He came along and helped me. But then when one day he said to me, when I was <clears throat> asking him a question, he said, Graham, go to the scriptures. Find your answers in the scripture. Because I was a psychologist at the time. Yeah. Um, but I have a degree in theology as well. And he said, go back. To the, and that was the, one of the best things he ever said to me. Go wow. back to the word. Wow. Yeah. And so I went back to the word and looked up all the references in scripture. I go, I had no idea what anger was. 
So, and one of the things is that <clears throat> even in 1 Samuel 11, we don't have time to go over that, but Saul, when he's made the new king of Israel, but they're, they're not formed, they got this, this uh, bully king uh, um, that comes, in, uh, Nahash the Ammonite, comes and wants to take some of the, the cities, the little small cities. And the, the, finally it says, the Spirit of God came on Saul and he burned with anger. Mm. Yeah. And that phrase caught my attention. What does it mean? Wow. And so basically it's a Hebraic expression, which means that the anger rose up on him <laughs> is what it means. Yeah. And in fact, that expression is used a number of times in the Old Testament to mean... So it moved him and motivated moved him. Moved wow. motivated Action. him to get the people together to fight against this king. And without yeah. that anger, he was too insecure as the new king to actually do it. He would not have done it otherwise. Wow. Anger is what enabled him to do it. Wow. Now, you know what? We see a <clears> lot of <throat> people today, I mean, just in our everyday walk, life we see a lot of people who have stuffed a lot of anger for a long time and it just seems like there's a whole generation out there that's yes. like um that it's erupting right, right now and in your book you talk about the big black cauldron, cauldron can yes. you talk to us about that because right. i thought it was so good and it will so help understand uh yeah. people understand where they are and what they need yeah. to do well i use the analogy like a big black pot or cauldron yeah. that when i get hurt anger is the result it goes in, I bear it, I push it down. Yeah. If I keep accumulating that, eventually this pot gets full. Yeah. And so you could be 15 years old, you could be 50 years old. Yeah. See, so it takes the, everybody's individual, but the pot gets full. At some point, one more hurt comes in, it spills over, and this quiet, normally quiet person says, How? and they rise up and they, yeah. where did that come from? Well, yeah, the pot right. just spilled over. I've yeah. seen that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've seen like, that. We've ministered to people and couples, and we see that, right? A passive yeah. oh. person, all of a sudden, who's this person? I've I experienced know. that myself, mm -hmm. you know, you know, when the pot got We always full. sometimes call it the straw that broke the camel's yeah, back. Yeah, that's another right? phrase. And so you'll go to the psychologist, you'll go to Graham Bretherick, and he'll help you <laughs> deal with that straw. Right? <laughs> right? Well, but you go home, and it's not long before there's another straw right. because you haven't dealt with what's left in the cauldron, right. wow. just what's been bubbling mm -hmm. over. Yeah. If you just deal with the consequences uh, of the anger or the expression of the anger, etc., that's a shallow way of dealing with it. You mm -hmm. have to empty the pot. So I just use in the analogy, stick a spigot in the bottom, turn the tap on, and drain it. Now yeah. that's all about forgiveness. Yeah. And what I often call radical forgiveness or total forgiveness, that's a whole different process yeah. than saying, oh, you hurt me, I'll just forgive you. Yeah. Now I, I've had numbers of people <laughs> say, but I did forgive my father, I did forgive yeah. my mother, I went to the front of the church or whatever else, yeah. mm -hmm. and I said, you're right, I heard this sermon, I said, I forgive them. Mm -hmm. The fact is that generalized prayer, I mean, it's sincere. Mm -hmm. and don't doubt it, it's sincere. But it actually doesn't deal with the detail of stuff in the right. big black pot. See, we've, we've heard of that several times, and even recently where people have said, well, I forgive that person who offended me or hurt me years ago, but I'm just talking to them, and I can go, okay, but mm. something's not finished something's yet not here. Finished. Something's terribly wrong yet. I don't. Some, yeah. I don't. You know, we're uh, uh, pastors of a church, as well as all yes. the other things we do. And it seems like on a regular basis, quite regular, we're dealing with couples for marriage <laughs> counseling. And you know, uh, just the other day, I went and got a bunch of books, didn't I, from yes. you, of okay. Healing Life's Hurts, because it it's just amazes Joan and I that we're dealing with couple after couple after couple, and we go, you know what, the same thing's going on. Yeah. There's hurts and anger, unresolved issues. And we say, they need a book. And thank God, we don't have to teach them all the stuff that's in the book. Yeah. And this is true for you. You know what? This is your opportunity to get extended counseling yeah. from a registered psychologist who's a pastor, he has been a pastor, mm -hmm. and has been a spiritual leader and an author of a book. And you can find out what's going on in your life. And really, this will address some of those issues of the cauldron. You said, you know, a little quick fix just doesn't do it. Yeah. The cauldron has to be dealt with, yeah. and walking them through this book will help you do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what an amazing, amazing tool that everybody can have. Now, to get the book, you can, if you contact our prayer lines, of course, we will direct you to how do we get them from Graham yeah. and from his ministry. But uh, let me just say, if you're a pastor... You should be buying these you by 20 or 40 at a time. <laughs> yeah, That one is available online on Amazon, too. Oh, it so is. Yeah. Thank and, you. Well, Amazon. there you go. You can go to mm -hmm. Amazon.ca or .com and order it right off mm -hmm. Amazon. But I'm serious. If you're a spiritual leader, you need this book. Uh, that's why I, well, because we're close enough to Graham, I can get them at a dozen at a time. But I said, we need a dozen of these books. And we're going to, uh, we do, and we do use them with couples and 
put them into their hands. So uh, just, again, Amazon.com. And, of course, if we, you do call our line, we will help you as well. We're going to go right now to Jill. She's at the prayer center. We'll be right back. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, it says, Two are better than one. It says, If one falls, the other will lift him up. But I know that many of you watching today are feeling very much alone. Maybe you're single, you're widowed. Maybe you're the only Christian in your family or in your workplace. Maybe you live in a small, isolated town where there's no really good church for you to plug into. And you long, you are longing for someone that will listen to you. You're longing for someone who cares, someone who will pray, someone who will lift you up. Well, I want you to know that we have intercessors in the Lifeline Today Prayer Center who want to be that someone in your life. They will pray for you. They will listen. They do care. And so I want you to call us right now. The number's on your screen, 403-942-0123. Hey, I should mention that you can also contact the Prayer Center by email. And so you can do that, and you can go through the uh, website as well, dickandjoan.com. So you also can find lots of resources, and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we mention different resources from time to time, especially videos that we've done before. You can find them there at dickandjoan.com. So that's one way to connect as well. Also, uh, Graham just mentioned this book is on Amazon as well. So amazon.com, mm -hmm. go there, and you can find it. It's under Healing Life's Hurts. But uh, I, I just yeah. said very strongly, every pastor or spiritual leader needs a bunch of these books. I mean it. Yeah. This is, um, if I think about all the counseling we do, then I would say 90% of it has some direct tie yeah. to this, mm -hmm. to this kind of situation. And every one of them, when we start talking to them, go back, all of a sudden, oh, there, there you go. There's the incident where anger came in and unresolved mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty predominant issue. Mm -hmm. Now, you talk in your book about <clears throat> the, you know, the fact that if we don't deal with anger, eventually it can turn into bitterness. Right. And of course, we know that the Bible says that the root of bitterness defiles Bios. many. Yeah. You know, so Causes talk a lot to of us, negativity. Talk to <clears throat> us about you know, how we can know if we are an angry person that this has actually turned to bitterness. Give us some of the symptoms, some of the things that we should watch for. Well, part of the difficulty is most people define anger as rage. Uh -huh. So they would say, so it's obvious. Someone rages me, say, oh, look, you know, there's obviously the cauldron's full, there's bitterness mm -hmm. there. Yeah. But, but that's only one aspect of mm -hmm. it. A lot of passive anger, in fact, in fact, passive anger is a more common response. Mm -hmm. And so it can be like, I start gossiping, I start slandering others, I withdraw from others, uh, I, uh, procrastination. Oh, and that yeah. can be because of fear as well. But hmm. sometimes it's, you want me to come to church on time? I don't want to come to church on time because I'm angry hey. at you. <laughs> it's kind of a bone with me because the, I, say, <laughs> I tell church people, you can make it to work on time. I know. And, and there I can know. be, lots of, there. Okay. There can be okay. various reasons why. But I mean, th those are examples. Yeah, yeah. procrastination mm. is an example, right? Mm. Uh, a, a blaming. If you find yourself blaming all the time, I mean, even things like blaming the government. I mean, mm -hmm. we know the government does wrong things, but if you're constantly railing at the government, my yeah. wife catches me on this sometimes, yeah. <laughs> you know, blaming, um, a, critical, a critical spirit yeah. is another example of that. Judgmental. Where you're judgmental, mm -hmm. if I'm constantly carrying judgment in my heart. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing the positive in people, I see the negative in But people. it's never me. It's no. always well, everyone that's, else. That's what right? blaming is. It's always yeah. somebody else, yeah. and I don't see the bitter root in me. So wow. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. There's hurt and anger. Mm -hmm. Unresolved, the cauldron's full. You don't want to be turning in on anything. You want to make sure all of the issues are out there because right. you don't want to expose that. Right. And, of course, tied into anger is shame, which is a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the shame, shame, negative shame has to do with hiding things. So I'm ashamed as a Christian that I don't have control of my anger. I'm ashamed that I'm depressed, which is anger turned inward. Yeah. All right? Or I'm having physiological issues, and the doctor checks out and says, I can't find any reason. Wow. Well, we can, you know. If you even want to look up the term neuropsychological, immunolo <laughs> neuroimmunological <laughs> diseases, neuro <laughs> neuroimmunological <laughs> diseases, I'll get it out soon. <laughs> if you can't say it, you're a registered yeah. psychologist, I'm not going to try. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there that relate to things not being dealt with. Yeah. See, if you don't, if you bury or repress or suppress or deny anger inward, it doesn't go away because it's energy. Hmm. Now, I often say as an illustration, you know, little two. Uh, AA batteries 
I have a shelf life of 10 years now, let alone something like uranium, which is energy, or mm. oil, which is energy, which has a lifetime. Mm -hmm. But anger can have a lifetime. So you can have people in their 70s and 80s who are still bitter from the time they were a child or, mm -hmm. or into their teen years or whatever yes. else. They've never dealt with it. Yeah. Mm. So wow. it's dangerous to stay. So now, earlier you talked about forgiveness. You've got to open the cauldron from the bottom and drain it. But right. Obvi and then you said, well, you can't just say, I forgive, and then it's over. Right. So get, let's get a little more specific. How do you do the forgiveness, really? And I know you probably cover this well in the book, right? Right. Well, one of the things, I, when I'm doing it in therapy and counseling, mm -hmm. because I'm going back, I take a history, I find out all the stuff that's back that hasn't been dealt with, and then I work it through uh, using what I call the forgiveness exercise, and it's, it's in the book again. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that's a tool. Yeah. And, and it's up to people to what they, I mean, I can't make people do this, but if they say, yeah, I want to get rid of this, here's a systematic way of getting, going through it. So I actually have them list the people they want to forgive. Then I list the, step two, the things that are counterproductive in their own lives, which gives them motivation. So this is the result of buried anger. This is the result of buried anger. I said, yes, yes. Mm. So I want to get rid of that. And then step three is actually listing for the person. Let's say it's dad, you know, father. So I'm working through all the things that dad, now dad had some positive qualities too. We're just dealing with the negative, all right? That's just the way it is. Yeah, so we're dealing with true. the negative. And so we work through the negative. And the step four is to take that, uh, the emotions, because you can't heal unless you feel. You mm -hmm. have to touch the emotions. It's not a cognitive or, or, or you know, a mind process. Mm -hmm. So you put the emotions attached to it. And that's sometimes the most difficult step, getting people to actually feel. Mm -hmm. Then step five, I have them write an anger letter. Now, I know that people often short circuit, they know a bit of my system, they just have them do the anger letter. I said, it's less effective. The anger letter is finally a way of getting it out. And then step six for me is then is to pray with them, have them pray and, and sort of say, I choose this day to forgive my father, for example, for all the wrongs that he did for me, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then I will, Sherry and I will often pray over them uh, afterwards just to remove emotionally you know, from them mm -hmm. that stored anger. And, and then uh, that we you know, keep working on the next person. Mm -hmm. that, that's the process. Now, if you don't want to use all that process, you can do it through prayer. The problem is a lot of times people do quick prayers. Mm -hmm. They don't actually work through. Mm -hmm. So for me, for example, if I'm angry at somebody, I, mean, I go for a run or a walk or I go somewhere in a quiet place and I express my anger up to God. Yeah. I tell I'm angry. I don't awesome. say, oh God, I'm angry. Mm. I tell yeah. him, I'm angry, God, yeah. at this person. That's getting the anger out because you have my definition. The biblical definition of anger is canceling the debt. Mm -hmm. But my practical definition is getting the anger up and out. Mm -hmm. And you can feel the difference. When the anger is gone, you can feel the difference. And Sherry and I know that in our relationship, mm -hmm. we have a conflict. And if we don't work out the anger and then we try to reconcile, it doesn't work, you know, because mm -hmm. it goes up. So then we realize, hmm, I guess the first thing we better do is go back and deal with the anger that's there. So when I get rid of the anger I feel towards Sherry, she gets rid of the anger she feels so towards me. So do you me. do that alone? I would do or that do you, alone. Oh, you yes. do that alone. Oh, yeah. Because Otherwise, if I try to do that with her. you'd be screaming at each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or refereeing in the case of counseling. <laughs> we do a lot of refereeing initially. Well, so there is something to be said. Like if someone has a conflict, there's a lot anger and then the emotions are attached to it, <laughs> that things have to resolve. They have to settle yeah. down yeah. so that you can do this. And sometimes that means just separating for, yeah. not separating your, you know, but just being withdrawing from the, from the conflict for oh, yeah. a period mm. of time and let oh, your yeah. emotions settle down. There are some cases when we're working with a couple, we will separate the husband and wife and I'll deal with the husband alone so he mm -hmm. can get his anger out because yeah. yeah. in the presence of his wife, He's either muted or, or not sure, mm -hmm. or it creates more hurt to her. And in your anger exercise, you say you have people write a letter expressing yes. all their anger. Right. Now, what you didn't say was that you don't give that to your husband or your Thank wife. You. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you do not. <laughs> Thank what you, What should you do with it then? <laughs> no, it's, it's between you us and it. the person. <laughs> well, yeah, you eat it. No. But it's between us and the person. No one else yeah. is going to see this letter. Mm -hmm. But the whole point, sometimes, you know, I've had people write me nice letters. I said... I'm sorry, I'm giving this back to you. This is a nice letter. I know you love your dad or mm -hmm. your mother, whatever else, but, and, and there's the positive qualities, but I'm trying to get at the negative. Uh -huh. I'm trying to get the anger out. So and some of those people who, who have been so used to stuffing mm -hmm. their anger have it's a hard time people. writing an angry letter, don't it they? It is, it is. Yeah. I know. Just so totally I kind of think we can be going on quite a bit here. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and thankfully there's a whole book and uh, if you feel like you've missed some of the stuff that even we've touched on today, it is in the book. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, I just want to say again, Graham, I, we have lots of books and things that we've presented on television over the years, but really I find this is one of the most practical mm. and helpful books and, mm -hmm. uh, and comes at a core issue, one of the major core issues facing most people in some mm -hmm. form or fashion. Uh, you may not be the worst case in terms of anger, but every one of us deal with it to some fashion, some degree. Sure, yeah. And I'm really going to encourage you again to get a hold of this book. Uh, again, Amazon.com is one place, but you can call the Prayer Center. We'll direct you in the right direction. But uh, especially for church leaders and churches, this would be an excellent book to have bulk up on. Get a bunch. Because in your counseling sessions, this will be an immense help. I think one of the issues I find about uh, personal counseling is that you cover some awesome stuff, but very often they go back into the busy routine of life, and some of that is forgotten and yeah. lost. Yeah. Right. Right. And uh, that and happened the other day. And then you can pick up the book again. It's awesome. That happened the other day, and that's why we were looking around for your book and said, oh, we better get some more mm. so that we could actually put I'd this into their my hands. note. I do have this material on DVD, too. Oh, that's uh, awesome. But for me, personally, you'd have to get it through Run Free. Yeah, you, you know, have. this is a whole other subject, but as we're talking about this, I think... You know, there are so many angry children nowadays, and how do you work out the anger out of a child, mm -hmm. you know, who's well, been hurt? Maybe you'll have to write a book on that someday, right. that <laughs> issue. Just put that in the back of your mind. But it, it's true, you know, there are yeah. so many angry children. Parents right. have I, split up. Homes we're just have, about know. out of time, but uh, how often is the anger, the hurt, back when you were a child, or how, and how frequent is it that it's a later time in life? Oh, it, I mean, it's hard to answer that question because a lot of times when we're doing history, it's back in childhood, back in teen years, back mm -hmm. in the 20s. Okay. And it's or, all or in the culmination. <laughs> it's all in the culture. So it can happen at any juncture. It can. Yeah. Oh, yeah, All right. That, that's powerful to know yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I think a lot of th people think, well, if you had a great childhood, then I'm exempt. No. Mm -hmm. No, not necessarily, yeah. right? But t sometimes the hurt comes from trauma. Sometimes it comes yes. from yeah. illness, yes. you know. So Lots it's not always like someone's punched you. Or we have one minute left, and I <laughs> want to just pray for <laughs> our viewers. Lord, I thank you for these precious ones. Yes, Lord. Thank you. You know, and I just want to say something to someone that's praying with me right now, that as we just began to pray, anger rose up in your heart, and you go, what is that? Mm. God is touching something in your heart. Don't, it's not wrong. God is touching you, yeah. and he yeah. wants something done, something changed. Lord, I release wow. healing through the airways today to you. Yes, You're sitting Lord. there. You need this healing in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for releasing this one from shame, mm. from disappointment, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. every other emotion, and I release them into your caring, loving hands in mm. Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. You should call the prayer center. We should, you should get the book. Thank you, Graham, for Thank sharing with so us. Much. This has been really insightful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see a whole series on this, really, in counseling <laughs> with Graham Brethren. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it would be powerful. Thank you again yeah. for being Thank on you, the program. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Remember this, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See you next time. Bye-bye. This Bye -bye. program is supported by viewers like you. And we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.